So what is serverless architecture in the AWS cloud? When you hear serverless in the cloud, it doesn't mean that there's no servers. It just means that you don't have to manage or think about the servers. AWS handles tasks like provisioning, scaling, and maintaining the server for you. So instead of worrying about setting up and maintaining the server, you can just focus on writing and deploying your code. So it's perfect for building applications quickly, scaling automatically to handle traffic, and only paying for resources that you need. So it's very cost effective. So this is how our diagram is going to look like today for the architecture that we're setting up in the AWS cloud. First, we're going to be setting up a DynamoDB table and putting movie data into it. Then we'll create a Lambda function that will be fetching data from our DynamoDB table. Then we'll be creating an API gateway so it's accessible to the public. After we create the API gateway, we will be using Postman to test it out. And we'll also be using IAM to allow Lambda to access our DynamoDB table. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm over here in my web browser. So we're going to go ahead and head over to the AWS console. Click login. And you can see that DynamoDB is on my recently visited, but I'm just going to go ahead and type it up here. And we're going to be creating a table that is going to be holding movie data. So let's go ahead and click on create table. Let's call this table movies. For the partition key, we'll make it movie ID. And we're going to keep this a string. Let's scroll down. We'll leave everything else as is and create table. So just give it a few seconds to load. Okay, so our movie table has finished creating. Now we are going to use an open source database where it has movie information and use the REST APIs to retrieve some movie information, then send it back to our DynamoDB table. So let's go ahead and head over to that open source. So I'm using this repo to give me access to movie information. We're going to go ahead and head over to this website and then generate an API key. So we'll have access to the REST APIs. I suggest going through and reading the readme file to just be, become familiar with this um, open source repo. So let's go ahead and head over to the website. Open up that link. You're going to head over to API key. So you're going to click on the free account and then just type in your information. So it's going to send the API key to your email. So let's go ahead and do that. So a verification link is going to be sent to your email. So this should take a couple minutes. So after a couple minutes, you want to go to your email and then activate your key using the URL they provide. So let's go ahead and do that. So your key is not activated, so we should be all good with this. So it's going to show you your key over here. So just keep that handy. Now we're going to go into our code editor and then create code using Bodo 3 in Python to fetch information from the open source database and store it into our DynamoDB table. OK, so I'm in my editor now. Let's create the file, new file. Let's name this file. API, oops, uh, API, I can't type API underscore movies.py. And let's just go ahead and save this into just any random folder. Do this to my projects folder, save it over here. Okay, so in order for you to use Boto 3, you're going to have to do a couple things. And one of those things is to install Python onto your computer. Then you need to go ahead and install the AWS CLI. And then you're going to have to configure that using your access keys that you will get from the AWS IEM. So if you don't know how to do those things, I will leave a link in below to a video that teaches you how to do those things. And my previous video was actually on doing those things but we will not be doing those things in this video. That was good, that was funny. But now I'm going to fast forward and create the code, then I will explain the code after I'm done writing it. 
So let's get started. Okay, so these are the libraries that we're going to be using for our code. Over here, we created a function to create a partition key for the movies that go into our table because it is required. Over here, we have two configurations. One is for us to connect to our DynamoDB table. The other one is to authenticate our API request to the database using our API key. Then we have a get movies function and a store movies function. And this is used in our main function so that we can take a movie title and search it in the movie database, then store that information into our DynamoDB table in AWS. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up our terminal. Are we going to run the file? API. So it's asking us for a movie and let's do Spider-Man because why not? It's a classic. Okay, so this is the output that we got showing us the information about Spider-Man movie. So now let's go ahead and go to AWS to see that it is in our database. Okay, so now we're th that we're back in our AWS console, we're going to go and see if our item was created. So we're going to click on our table. Okay, so we're here in our table and we're going to go to explore items. And we see that the Spider-Man movie was added, which is great. So now let's move on to create our Lambda function that is going to be grabbing our items from our database. So let's do that. Okay, so we're over here in Lambda. So we're going to go ahead and create a function. Let's call this function service API. Oops, can't do that. API. We're going to be, our runtime is going to be Python. And we're going to run the latest version, which is Python 3.13. So for permissions, we're going to go ahead and create a new role. So let's do this right here. Let's call this role um, Lambda for DynamoDB. DynamoDB. Go ahead and click create. Now that our function is created, we're going to go to IAM and then create a row so that Lambda has the correct access to our DynamoDB table. So let's do that. Let's go to IAM. Click on that right there. Go to rows. So I'll create a new one. So over here, we're going to do AWS service. The use case is going to be Lambda. I'm going to click on next. So we wanted to have access to DynamoDB. So let's do DynamoDB. So we just need to give it read access. So we're going to add this policy right over here. You can go ahead and click on the plus sign to see the full uh, JSON policy, which we don't need. Let's just go ahead and add this. Click on next. Let's call this role practice and uh, let's not call it that that's a boring name let's scroll down and hit create row I just realized I have three rows that look exactly the same. I need to get better at naming them. But let's continue. Okay, so I already have code created for our function. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste it over here. I will have the code in my GitHub so you can go over and just copy and paste it so you can move along in this tutorial. So let me just paste it over here. So let's go ahead and test this code. So now we're going to go ahead and test the code. I already have a test code. Um, we're just going to use curly brackets to so it returns every value or sorry, every item that's in the table. Since this code is already created, it already has a name. But if it, you don't have this created, which you probably don't, you're going to have to name the event to. So let's just hit test code and wait for it to execute the function. 
and you see that it was successful. We got a 200 um, status code. Uh, you see that the item that was in the table, the Spider-Man, which we did put in the table earlier, was received. So everything is looking good. Now we're going to go ahead and create a API gateway. So let's do that. Okay, so now we're going to go to API Gateway. So it's over here my recently visited, so I'm just going to click on this. Okay, so I was going to say choose an API type. We are going to click on REST API. Click on Build, Name the API. I'm going to call this Serverless API. Then click Create API. Okay, so that's created. Now we're going to create a resource. For resource name, we're going to call it Movies. Make sure to click on Course, uh, Cross Origin Region Sharing. Click Create Resource. Okay, so now that's created. We are going to create a method. So we are trying to get information from our table. So this is going to be a get type or a get method type. So we're going to choose the Lambda function that is going to be using. So for us, that's going to be the serverless underscore API. So let's click that. And we're going to go ahead and click on create method. Okay, so now that that's created, we are going to now deploy the API. So click on deploy API. Okay, so it's going to be a new stage. Let's call this production let's call it just prod deploy okay. now that that's creating or deploying to the production stage we got to invoke URL right over here and this was generated as like our unique endpoint so clients or users can access our API so we're gonna go ahead and test this API in postman you don't know what Postman is, this is a great place to test uh, your APIs. So we're gonna copy this and over, head over to Postman. Okay, so I'm over here in Postman, so we're gonna just create a new collection. Blank collection, we'll just name this API testing. And add a new request. So you're gonna, um, So you're gonna paste your invoke URL over here. Then we're gonna add a forward slash and then database name, which is movies. And we're gonna hit send. Shit. What the fuck was it? Was it movies and Spider-Man? Or was it a lowercase? So then you're going to 